Hey everybody, I hope all of you are doing well. It has been a wild week. I hope everything is going the way that you want it to go. I'm here with you. One more segment of Riding with Rick. Look, you know the routine. If you believe in the work we're doing, support it. The links are in the description box. If you like the content you're watching and listening to, click the like button follow and subscribe now look so what what what, what i'm hearing is I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to make sure i hear this correct what i'm getting is so you're telling me that coco golf is getting pushback for her moment of prayer after winning her first major championship at the age of 19 grand slam championship get golf and tennis mixed up her first grand slam championship at the age of 19 having watched this little girl grow up like it seems like yesterday she was just 14 and losing to Naomi Osaka uh, and crying and you know and, and here she is you know back on the stage and, and winning and there are people who are actually not just critiquing or criticizing what she did. They're on the attack. And so they're on the attack. And I'm going to get to the quote unquote supposed justification and explanation for why they are appalled at the fact that she prayed in public. Uh, forget the fact that sports players from baseball players hitting home runs to football players scoring touchdowns to nba players hitting a big shot pointing to the sky praying crossing their heart uh with a universal sign of uh, of, of prayer uh and this little girl young lady let me tell you she's she's growing up young lady uh who has been unbelievably professional under all of the criticism, under all of the attacks, under all of the hatred. She's been very stern. She hasn't backed down, but she has been very professional. She's been very respectful of her opponents. And from what I've gathered, from what I could find and look and read, uh, her opponents and her uh, peers in the sport respect her. Um, and that's what you want as a person that does anything in life. Sports is just one thing in life. It gives you a grander stage on a professional level, but it's life. And every day you show up in life and you do what you're supposed to. And you respect the game. You respect your gift. And you respect your opponent. Now, if your opponent handles you rough or does something well, you determine how you're going to respond to that. But understand, every response is a direct reflection of who you are. Sometimes that, that opponent, depending on what they do, deserves a pop in the mouth. Other times they deserve to be ignored. But what I've watched is this young lady with such little experience in this and still maturing into herself handle it with grace, handle it with confidence, handle it the way that it should be handled. And I commend her for that. So what you're telling me is you have a problem with her. It is the prayer. You didn't like her before she won. You can't stand her now because she looks too much in story like Serena. Wins first, Grand Slam, at 19 goes on to be the most dominant tennis woman female tennis player of all time and no one could do anything about it and let's be clear Serena faced a lot of racially driven vitriol and hatred throughout her career uh, uh, I can't think of the name of the the, uh, the tournament it's in it's it's in something Wales, California but she stopped going there for a year her and Venus for years because of the racial slurs that were being hurled at her and this was in the 
21st century. And to think that all of a sudden we're in a new age, stop buying into that post-racial BS that they throwing at you. The game changes, the optics change, but the ultimate goal is the same. And we have to understand where we fall in the pecking order and understand that we have to protect ourselves, we have to protect our own. I'm speaking out on this because it's absolutely ludicrous, but it's coming from people, this is what it is. One person said, there are people missing in Morocco from an earthquake, 3,000 people missing or dead, and you think God cares about uh, a sporting event. This young lady, before this all happened, gave a very strong representation of her faith. I don't tell people what faith to claim, but I am a strong advocate of whatever faith you claim, hold it tight. Uh, embrace it, live it, let it show in your life, let it be a reflection. You shouldn't have to tell a person what you believe in. They should see it by the way you move and behave. I'm not saying being over religious and a whole bunch of extra over the top stuff. I'm talking about this shit in your confidence. They should see it in how you celebrate. They should see it in a bunch of different things. They should see it in the calmness. Even when you're on the dark side or the back side of something, they should see it. And so uh, she had explained, hey, this is what it is. She said she's never play prayed to God for the outcome. She's prayed for the uh, ability to play at her best that she has the strength and ability to play at her best each and every time. And she was simply giving thanks at that moment for God keeping his end of the bargain. She knows she put in the work. She knows she's the one on the court playing, that God isn't gonna favor one athlete or another. That she understands that, that's what the, but that's what they're saying is, you know, that God's gonna favor her over the other athletes, that God cares more about sports than people dying, that God, and you know, all this stuff that's going on and you, you, and so the thing is, you're not offended with the prayer. Athletes do it all the time. You're offended with the young black girl that didn't fold when her heart broke five years ago. That's what you're, you're looking at. You're looking at that she didn't stop coming. She didn't stop coming because she lost the name of Siak. Uh, Osaka. She didn't stop coming because she got far in the Australian Open and, and, and then didn't make it. She didn't stop because she did well but then ultimately lost in the French Open. She didn't stop. She kept going. She kept pushing. She kept doing what we naturally do is be resilient because we've had to be resilient for a total of 400 years plus since 1619 at least that we've had to be resilient. We've had to overcome unbelievable obstacles just to survive in this country. And not only have we survived in many, many ways and instances, we've thrived. We've been a driving force in the rapid advancement. Without us, there is no rapid advancement. There is no uh, world power USA. Without us, many of the inventions that are technological masterpieces now would not be because we are resilient, because we didn't lose our creativity in the darkness of slavery, in the darkness of oppression, in the darkness of reconstruction, in the darkness of Jim Crow. We didn't use it. And now you're mad because here comes someone. Y'all mad because every time y'all think y'all got something like away, here come one of us to take it over. I mean, hockey now. Y'all still mad at Tiger the black half of them. Y'all mad at Serena. The thing is, excellence is excellence. No matter what's, what, what, what it's wrapped in. But when you happen to wrap it in melanin, it seems to have a little extra something. And it bothers you. It bothers you that she dances with the fans. It bothers you that she's enjoying her life and she's not crushed by all of the negativity that surrounds her. That she's not walking around with her head down crying and miserable like many of the people who are attacking her. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. But you're not. That's who y'all are. You know, I know she won't see this, but Coco, baby girl, hold your head up. Keep doing what you're doing. You represent your faith like you're supposed to. Nobody, nobody, you know your journey. Nobody, nobody can validate your story but you. Walk it, live it, and for everybody else, walk it, live it love it. We've got so much going on and you know, and you would 
think that it shouldn't be an issue, but it is. And, you know, I, I pick and choose the stuff that I'm going to sit up and I'm going to give my time and attention to. But, you know, any time that one of us, and, and I'm going to make my point, any time that one of us gets that kind of shine and we break through something, that's a whole lot of people. Them And then some that look like us, that aren't happy for us. And that's this vitriol that flow. Tell me one time, a white person broke through something for the first time and was excited that black people turned on them and lost their freaking minds. We're not naturally like that. We can be made to be like that through experiences and, 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 and traversing all the negativity we have to traverse, but naturally we celebrate people. Naturally, we want to see people happy, but we're getting to the point where a lot of us are so bitter because of the way things are going in our lives. We're starting to hate our own our, the, the, the ones in our own camp, our own people for, for shining. Man, I'm fanning flames. You set your stuff on fire, I'm fanning it. I'm fanning it because I knew you had to fight like hell to get there. We are an unbelievably phenomenal people. They want to sell us on some sense of inferiority that we are not as good or, and then they want to sell us on well when you excel in sports that's your only advantage you are physiologically this this or this but no our creativity fuels so much of what you do you steal from our creativity and you rebrand it as your own. You put dollar stamps on our creativity and convince us to sell it to you where you brand it as your own. No, we are brilliant people. We are remarkably brilliant, resilient, powerful. And my goal until I take my last breath is to awaken my people to their unbelievable brilliance, to the infinite possibilities of what they're capable of doing if they set their mind to it. Coco Goff is just a, 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 a glimpse into what's powerful. Serena was a glimpse. Tiger is a glimpse. Michael Jordan, Kobe, LeBron are glimpses. And that's just in the sporting arena. The top three highest IQs right now in the world. Not that I give a lot of validity to IQs because they actually stack that deck against us. Uh, a couple of the uh, mechanisms of that test doesn't measure intelligence. It measures knowledge. But we done got to the point that the top three IQs are all black kids under the age of 17. We coming for it. And I don't know what it's gonna look like because so many of us refuse to wake up, but the, those of us who decide that we're going to open our minds and explore possibilities and pursue greatness and excellence, we're about to turn up. And it's not a damn thing they're gonna be able to do about it. On that note, look, I'm out of here. Like I said in the beginning, if you believe in what we're doing, look in the description box, show some love. If you like what you're hearing, click the like button, subscribe and follow. On that note, I'm out of here. Y'all be, be out. Peace.